Oh, I don't make the rules. I don't make the rules. Sometimes the wins, the big games, when you get those three points away from home, aren't always that pretty. What did you make of Sheffield United's third away win on the spin? 1-0, as you can see, scrolling along the bottom in Wales against Cardiff City. Let me know your comments. Pop them in the chat, whether you're watching live or watching later. That's the great thing with YouTube. You can watch these videos at any single time. You choose when works best for you. My name is Hal. This is the Chef United way. We've all just witnessed it, unless you missed it completely. And you're looking for this as a recap, which also you're welcome along too, because what I'll do is go through it piece by piece. Let's start in the time-honored tradition with the first half. But don't forget to give this video a like. Uh, Cardiff lined up with a 4-3-3. Big changes due to injuries for the Blades. I thought it was pretty good to see a young Blades fan, Oliver Arblaster, actually get a chance to start in this one. His full league debut in midfield. So we had Wes in goal, a back three of Bash, Egan and Jackie Longthrow. George and Ender as wing-backs with Ozzy. You had Oliver Norwood, and to our blaster, as I've mentioned, in the middle, Billy and Illy up top. So, early biscuits, we saw Ryan Allsop, the Bluebirds keeper, go long. He was going long with accurate passes, looking for players out wide, the likes of Calamo, Dowder, and Joe Rawls, causing a few problems up against this makeshift United back line. No Anel Ahmed Hodzic. On 12 minutes, Jack Robinson fell awkwardly. It was a challenge with O'Dowder. He put a lot of weight on that right leg, Jackie Long throw as he went backwards. And with a depleted defence, after, of course, United sent some young defenders out on loan just before this game, Kieran Clark replaced Robinson. So 15 minutes gone. We'd already had the, the standard Blades injury, and it was 50-50 in terms of possession. Nice little spell around the 25-minute mark. Ball crossed by Billy Sharp on the right. was cleared by the Cardiff defender as die, just waiting to head it. But uh, it was taken away. Egan also followed up with a nice volley wide just after. But pressure maintained as uh, Ben Osborne crossed on the left but cleared. Clark put the ball in, but this time it was intercepted and Cardiff could break with Marlon Romeo, son of soul-to-soul -soul musician Jazzy B, standing up across, which uh, fell to Harris. He was pretty busy in this game for the Bluebirds until he got substituted. But Norwood did enough to put Harris off and uh, up the Harris, it, it flew over. Uh, Long-range strike on 30 from Wintle was really close. Just went wide of the post. I mean, if you see it again, it looks in all the way. Wes would have had absolutely no chance. And I have to say, it, it wasn't a match for the neutral, was it, at this point? By the half-hour mark, not a great game. Callum Robinson, remember him, uh, wasn't far wide with a header at the far. Good attacking play on the left from uh, Callum O'Dowd. Again, a real danger man. His cross stood up superbly. Robinson could have done better. The real clear-cut chances were eluding the blades and the better chances, you have to say, it were falling to the home side in the first half. A great ball dock recovery challenge on 42 minutes. This isn't going to get a lot of chat, but it warrants a mention. Cardiff could have been in, again, on the left in the box, but George snuck in and took the ball away from the attacker, who had no idea he was there, no idea he was coming. Well done, George. Cardiff had to score, though, didn't they, on 45. A real mess at the back for the Blades. Somehow not capitalised on by the Bluebirds attacking pair. Bash played it blind, I think. You know, what was he thinking? Two wares. It was intercepted by Harris, and Egan made a great tackle to stop his shot. But then it fell to Callum Robinson, whose shot was blocked by Norwood, and United survived somehow. Callum Robinson would have another effort, a dink, about a foot over of Wes's bar in that first half, and it ended nil-nil at the end of the first 45. Cardiff had the better of the opportunities, absolutely no question. And as we went into the second half, I'm sure many of you were thinking the same as me, it did look like there was only going to be one winner. And then, and then that man, yes, Paul, absolutely right, brought on at half time. James McAtee, the Man City Loney, came on for the final 45 before the World Cup break. He was on for Oliver R. Blaster and McAtee would really change the game and would have a chance to play in sharp straight away. 
and didn't take it. A great opportunity to slide in Sharp, who had, had an open goal, big opportunity missed, but a bright start to the second half for the Blades. We won a corner on the right. Egan did well, freed himself and planted a header. It was travelling towards goal, but it hit a Cardiff defender on the back of the head and out for another corner. On the left this time, which eventually led to a McAtee chipped ball in, and Egan nearly sliding it in, but Kieran Clark deflected the ball away from his teammate, from his defensive partner, and the ball went out of play for a goal kick. And it was just, you thought at that point, like, oh, okay, so we're playing a little better second half, but, you know, it might be one of those days. Uh, McAtee had a shot on target on 50, driving run at the defender, got his shot away on the edge of the box, cutting in on his left. You love to see it. I've uh, said a lot of good things about uh, James McAtee and uh, you know he kind of he kind of answered a few few critics today. Uh, my mate Joseph uh, getting in on that a bit of the um, the trainer stick, which seems to have stuck to me. I think it was Stoke Stoke away where that really began. I've got some pretty decent trainers ready for tonight. I'm actually going out out uh, as you can tell. I'm dressed really really nice for a mate's leaving do straight after this, which is why you're getting this a little earlier. That's the way we roll on Chef United way. Uh, a great five minutes from United, all blades camped in the Cardiff final third. Kieran Clark should have scored from a corner wide of the far stick, only O'Dowder marking him who didn't even jump and that was a big chance. United set pieces looking like the way to break these down at this point. The referee Matthew Donoghue from Greater Manchester wasn't giving us much what did you make of the referee's performance? And Dai, who, by the way, Illiman and Dai, if he loses a ball, he does everything to win it back. It's something he's always done. It's something I've always admired about him. He never goes missing. He never hides. He wasn't having his best day today, but he still did that. And Sharp had appeals in this match on the edge of the area for free kicks, and Dai did as well, both ignored. Sharp was holding the ball up really well, particularly start of the second. Looked strong, looked determined. He got a shot away from outside the box on 55, straight at the keeper, decent hit on his stronger right, did well at turn, created the space for himself. He's completely, when he's done all that, absolutely advised to have a shot. Uh, 62 minutes on the clock, and I made a note that Ndai wasn't quite Ndai by this stage in the game. Of course, as soon as I wrote that, he then so showed some lovely feet, more than one occasion after he did that. But uh, he looked a little tired, Today, uh, Cardiff made a change. Colwell came on for Harris. Harris will look back at chances missed. He scored against us, actually, in the match last season, but not for him today. Uh, 64, George the Great, star man, furious, gorgeous. George Baldock scoring, breaking into the box on the right, drilling the ball under Allsop, and nothing more than United deserved. Great McAtee play. A slightly, if you see it again, ungainly back heel, but he made it work, and it landed perfectly for Baldock, and he did the rest. Great run from the Greek Right wing back, his first goal since scoring against Swansea. He absolutely loves leathering it past the Welsh. And die with a tired pass straight to Wintle after that in the midfield. And on 68, Cardiff would launch a bit of an attack of their own, having more of the ball. It was only really Baldock and Basham defending that stopped and Cuckoo getting into the box. Blades fans, by the way, let me make a note of this, were absolutely magnificent in this game. Loud and proud, and there in numbers. I was so proud to be a Sheffield United fan, watching from afar. Uh, I've, those that don't know, I'm living abroad now, and it was just, just great to see. When I say abroad, I don't mean Wales. Um, Shea Ojo and Gavin White came on on 71 for the home side. Rawls off and Cuckoo off. So an attacking change. Cardiff, therefore, signaled the intent. They were going for the attack. And I made another note on 72. Uh, Skillyman and Dai looks really tired and a few uncharacteristic misplaced passes. Good luck at the World Cup, though, Starboy. So proud of you. He needs a rest, poor lad, but go and live your dream. You absolutely deserve it. 74 minutes, Sharp got his shot away. Norwood with the inch-perfect pass and a shot on the right, forcing a decent save from Allsop, looking for his first of the season, the 36-year-old Blades fan, Billy Sharp. It'll come. He'll come. Keeps playing like he did second half. He'll be right. Uh, Ender Stevens clipped his man, clipped the heels 
of um, Little Romeo uh, as he was running down the right. So Ender got a yellow on 79 and a dangerous free kick. That kind of position, I don't like free kicks given away just there. I'm not sure if Romeo was actually going anywhere, but you know maybe he was going to get a cross in. So who knows if Ender just took one for the team or if he could have really avoided that and maybe ushered him out for a throw in. But swing it swung in, uh, looking for an G, literally just N and G, the best surname in football, but cleared and McAtee could break, set up Osborne, whose shot was saved, it landed at the feet of Ndai, who stumbled and didn't make a clean connection to guide it into an open net. Could have been 2-0, arguably should have been 2-0. McAtee, though, a big impact in this second half. Great break from the Manchester City low knee. Uh, thoughts on Callum Robinson, Blades fans, Cardiff fans, if you're actually uh, watching in here. What did you make of uh, Callum Robinson and his performance in this one? He probably was their most dangerous player, but quiet in the second. By the way, got to mention this. Egan with a fabulous tackle on 86 on Callum Robinson. Got the ball. Superb little Nick, uh, which is also in good Nick's nickname uh, cut when he gets out of the bar. Cardiff fans and Robinson, they didn't like that tackle at all, but it was a good tackle. I think if anyone sees it again, they'll say, yep, yeah, got the ball. Uh, Kadra. On for the exhausted Iliman and Dai on 89. And a question now over how long would the referee add on? Not many stoppages. Four minutes was the answer to that one. Um, absolutely, Nicholas. Yeah, Callum Robinson didn't really pose a threat in the second half. Could not agree more. So we knew he had four. And you're thinking, hold tight, hold firm. And on 93, Cardiff had a corner on the left. Everyone was up, even their keeper. They tried everything to get a clean shot away, and Ojo had that moment right at the death, and he steered it wide in the box on his left, a big miss, and I was nervous. We've seen this story before, but United hung on. Uh, Wolfgang Bailey saying Callum Robinson was okay, but he showed us exactly why he wasn't going to cut it in the Prem. What was it, two goals in 19 for Callum Robinson? I think something like that. Of course, remember him fondly for uh, the goal against Chelsea. That great performance, really, against Chelsea. But I always thought he was more of a winger, but it seems like he's playing as a striker for Cardiff. And you know his goal return would suggest that I'm right. Uh, anyway, third away win on the spin, 1-0 United. A really, really gutsy, determined, not pretty, not a good game. I'm not watching that game back. Absolutely no chance. But United got the win. You know, And that's really, when you're coming into a break like we are, that's all you can ask for. Three away wins, as I say, on the spin. You've dropped those annoying points at home against Rotherham. So it's all about can you get the win in these kind of games where really everyone looked like they're just ready for a World Cup break. It was all a bit third gear. But second half, I thought United were really good and deserving of the win in the end. First half, it was all Cardiff. Second half, it was the Blades. And uh, I thought McAtee was really good. <laughs> Gav, mate, if I could talk to you about the fact that none of my stuff has arrived since I left England and uh, these are like the only curtains we could get and I've got no like blade shirts to hang behind me or anything. I mean, I'm quite annoyed none of our stuff's still arrived. My wife is apoplectic with rage. Let's not get into that. Let's end on a high. The Blades have won. We're going to have a little break here on uh, Chef United Way in terms of match previews and reactions because we're not going to do England games. What we've got coming up for you, though, is uh, more player former player, uh, maybe a few special former players coming up as well, um, interviews and uh, some some really exciting some really exciting interviews. So make sure you subscribe to this channel because the stuff we've got coming up over the World Cup break, you are not going to want to miss. Thank you very much. If you haven't yet, please give this video a like. And if people that you know don't watch Chef United Way uh, and they support Sheffield United, that bit's probably quite important. Uh, please do tell them. We're trying to grow the channel and we need your support. Always good to hear from you. Thanks very much, Blades. 1-0. We'll take it.